Good morning. You guys are probably thinking, why are you coming on camera so bare, Casey? I have the answer for you. I come to you in just my skincare because today we're going to do our 2019 yearly favorites makeup, a full face tutorial. I'm going to show you guys today my holy grail products for 2019. And this is going to be a little different than the ones you usually see because I'm not a beauty guru. This is going to be like your average girl's 2019 yearly favorites, some drugstore, some high end. I think I have a good mixture. Some might surprise you, some might not. So we're going to just go in the natural order that we would do our face in. So we're going to start with primers. The one I'm going to use today is kind of new to me, but I do want to have honorable mention for a few primers that have stuck with me for all of 2019. And those would be the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. You know it, you love it. This primer just glides on perfectly. It, it's like all of the best things about primers combined into one, as far as I'm concerned. I really love the Cover FX Blurring Primer. If you like a primer that comes out with like a soft tint to it, this would be it. I have dark spots on my face, and actually this is my skin behaving pretty nicely. And this really works for me. And then lastly, the Dr. Brandt Lumilayer Primer. This covers pores. It also illuminates the skin. This is, again, a pretty good, like, two-in-one. If you're going to target two problems, this is a primer that is good for it. And these primers last me for literally ever. This one I've had for, like, two years. But the one we're going in with today has definitely been my favorite of 2019, and that is the Touch & Soul Glossy Pretty Filter Skin Balm. Okay, let's talk about packaging. Firstly, so cute. And why I love this primer is, oh my gosh, I'll tell you in one second. So hard to describe. I actually got this sent to me in a boxy charm. We've gotten a few Touch and Soul primers this year, but the other ones I've gotten rid of because I thought they were junk. I'm pretty picky when it comes to primers. This one though, pretty filter, it doesn't lie. It really makes me feel like I have a like Instagram or Snapchat filter built right on into my skin. It just makes my skin feel so smooth. It, the foundation sticks with it perfectly. It's like the perfect amount of tackiness for the foundation to just stick right on top of it. And I really can't say enough good things about this primer. 2019 hasn't been a great concealer year for me. First, I wanna mention the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Concealer. And we'll talk a little bit more about this when we go ahead and put it under our eyes. So this is what we'll be using for under our eyes today. And the other concealer I really liked in 2019, which I got towards the end, was the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Concealer, although truthfully, I definitely got it in too light of a color. But I like to use this to carve out my eyebrows, and I do that, like, first step after the primer, which is, I know, so weird, but it really works for my skin. I apologize for looking this way, but I wanted to keep this, like, very much just about the makeup. I didn't want any distractions on me or in the frame. And this year we're going to try to do some more tutorials on this channel, so let me know if that's your cup of tea. So I just go straight from the Dofa applicator, applicator and just directly. I know this looks so crazy and I usually end up getting some in my eyebrows, but truthfully, this is a great way to do your brows. I'm, I'm telling you right now. Take advice and then taking a royal and lancome brush i'm just going to start blending that out that's just like really provides highlight to the skin and the coverage on this is really good i have veiny eyes so for this step i like to drag it down using that small brush but then i transfer to this luxie foundation brush and i really just kind of blend that all the way down the eye and then for foundation, our next step, I'm so sorry that these are both sample size, but if I'm going to tell you about my best foundations, it shouldn't matter if they're full size or sample size. Tarte's won it for foundation for me this year. I've tried like three or four of theirs. These are the two I'm working with right now. That is the Amazonian Clay and the Found Sealer, which is almost gone. And I'm so sad. And I love these foundations. I feel like Tarte's foundations just offer full coverage, but they don't feel so heavy on your skin and they don't look super cakey when you're done when all said and done with the face we're going to be using the last of the fun sealer today but i did want to mention the amazonian clay because this is an awesome foundation as well moving into the realm of like powder bbcc tinted i did try a ton of bbcc's and 
tinted moisturizer this year because I wanted to step away from wearing foundation every day. And out of all the ones that I've tried, this is it, the Rimmel BB Cream. I'm telling you right now, I just apply this with my hands, put a powder over top of it, and this, I get compliments on my skin all the time when I'm wearing just this. It just looks like a natural sheen on your face, and this is super inexpensive. The It one's great. I've used a few tubes of that this year, but this is the one I'm going to recommend to you today. Powder that I usually put on top of it or wear alone sometimes is the Fit Me. You know it. You've heard of it. You love it. My Maybelline Matte and Poreless Powder. This one's almost gone, too. Looks like I'm going to need to do some makeup shopping in 2020. So I want to give these honorable mentions just for other options if you're not really into the liquid uh, foundation scene. This is going to drive a lot of people nuts, but I literally just apply this directly to my face, just like so. It is snowing so bad outside right now, and I have to go to work today. My favorite sponge for, I don't know, this staying the crown for years for me is the Real Technique sponge. I just love it. This does not really match my skin right now. I've given up on tanning, so we're in between all the foundation shades that I have right now. Um, but this one can work when all is said and done, so this is the one. This is the one we're chugging along with today. Okay, we're going to go in with our concealer, which again I've said is the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. I, I love this stuff. It's kind of thick and kind of sticky, but if you know how to use it properly, it really doesn't turn out that way. I just put it directly onto my sponge and I just tap it underneath the eyes and blend out. I don't do concealer anywhere else most of the time. This is just a new thing for me, but I've just found that this is enough for me. I just like a little bit of extra coverage under here, although that foundation does a really good job because it is a found sealer of covering up, you know, your bags and also your, like, look, I look like a, a live person. Yes, so we love to see this. So I'm going to set the under eye. I'm using the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it, a little bit of tint. I like just using a little bit of this right underneath the eye and a couple honorable mentions I guess we could say is I really loved in 2019 the Aesthetica translucent setting powder which I got right on Amazon just on like the spur of the moment sort of thing but I love it no flashback it sits beautifully on the skin and the other one would be the Makeup Forever HD setting powder um, it's so finely milled it makes a mess when you use it it's a little chalky but Again, I'm, I'm big on flashback not happening. Um, I wore the Color FX one once to a graduation and I look ridiculous in every single picture. So I just gently, lightly, very lightly, just tap that right underneath. I feel like the packaging on this is also just like very mess free because it comes with a little like net on top of the product. So it doesn't end up like going all over the place. And then it closes. So you just get that little but that's really it. And the rest of the face, I'm just gonna set with my favorite powder of 2019, which is, I won't use the Fit Me, cause I already mentioned it, and I do feel like that's more of a foundation that I can wear alone. But the CoverGirl Clean Matte, this is it. I'm almost, I'm almost done with this too, but we can squeeze out what we can. This is in the shade Warm Beige, and I just take a big fluffy brush, and I just pat it on the rest of the skin just to set in place just I just think it's like just sits so nicely it adds a ton to the look after I've laid all that dry powder down on my face I like to do a spray of setting spray of sorts I like to use a glowy one to kind of bring the glow back to the look as you can tell I'm not lying about any of these products because they're literally all almost gone because I've used the crap out of them in 2019 and this is the pixie by Petra glow mist skin tree and this stuff is great I've tried high-end ones. This is it for me. You can get this at Target. Um, it, it mists beautifully. It sits beautifully. I just love what it does to the look. We'll go ahead. See? It just kind of put that glow. Also, let me know. I do have some sprays in like my skincare routine that I like to use. So let me know if you guys would be interested in like um, a skincare or just favorites in general of the air. Just like random favorites like coffee or music or whatever. And we can go ahead and do that. But this is it, ladies. Pixie by Petra. On to the brows. Some people might come at me for this, but I genuinely feel this is a true statement. The Makeup Revolution Brow Pomade is a great dupe for the Anastasia Dip Brow. 
I've used both. This is like a quarter of the price and it works great. If you haven't tried products for a makeup resolution in 2019, do it in 2020. Do, just do it. Um, this, it, it's just, it literally is the same. I'm telling you right now, it's, it's gotta be darn close to the same formula. And I just use this to kind of darken up the brows, outline them a little bit. I don't like, I don't really give shape to my brows. I, I'm okay with how they look, but I just use this to make them a little more pronounced, if you will, I guess. Um, and just look at it. Sparse and like, where are you? And then like, hi, here I am. It just goes on so easy. If you are afraid of doing your brows, do the, do it with this. It's so user friendly. Anyone could do it, I swear, I swear. I haven't found a better brow gel than the Anastasia. Uh, Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. This stuff just, it sets, it sets your brows. It keeps them sticking exactly where you want them, which for me, I like to point the top of them upward and then downward with the rest. And they will, they will harden and they will stay all day. It's like hairspray for your eyebrows, okay? Hairspray for your eyebrows. This stuff is expensive, so... But it lasts a long time. If you've been on my channel literally ever, you know that the favorite thing in my makeup routine for me is bronzer. I love to contour. I love a good bronzer. We do it every day, pretty much. It's like, if I'm wearing nothing else, I'm wearing mascara and bronzer. When I was young, that's all I would put on my face, just bronze my entire face. I don't know who I thought I was, but it was cool. So I have a lot to talk about, but it's good because you're gonna get a lot of variety here. And then we'll dive into my most used contour palette of this year and probably last year too. Again, something that took the crown two years in a row. So if we're going to talk drugstore and you want an affordable option for contour, this is it. It is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Contour Palette. Um, this is the shade Dolce de Leche. They did reformulize this and I've heard it's not as good as this one, but I'm holding on this old school one for dear, dear life it is so compact it can go right in your makeup bag it's not a big chunky palette and these colors are great this banana powder it's great and and this mm, this is good this is good my next favorite this is new for me in 2019 i finally gave in and bought it with everyone talks about it i don't need to say much is the hula bronzer and i just love the packaging on this it does it is a little dark for me i in this you do have to start small and work your way up because this can be loud. It can be really loud. So when I'm feeling adventurous, I'll play with this. But it's not, truthfully, it's not what I reach for every day. I just like the the orangish burnt shade in it. This is a new favorite for me for the year. And to be fair, it's more so about the banana powders than the bronzers. But this is a Tarte, beautifully packaged, Park Ave Princess palette. Just take a look here, okay? This shade right here enhance it brightens it, it brightens like a dream like a dream the bronzing colors are good um not my favorite but these with a packing brush a whole new lady i'm telling you right now but the one the only the best contouring palette known to man and i'm going to just go out and say it will always be the very loved as you can see kat von d shade and light palette mm. Okay, highlighters, so good. I've almost, this this is my most used palette, period, the end, favorite product of 2019. But this is the one I'm working with right now, and this is the one we're gonna go ahead and put on today. I love the formula on these. They're creamy, yet powdery. They're, they blend like a dream. They are awesome. I like to use a big, this is a Morphe brush, and I just go right in. I go in circular motions, right in little uh, tutorial on where to bronze like hello um, your threes so I do a three on either side of my face threes I just I can't say enough about this product I really can't I just like it's a whole new face hello hello yeah so get this honestly sometimes if you're lucky you will find this at TJ Maxx pick it up if you do it will change your life. I'm telling you right now. Sometimes I go a little too crazy with it, as you can see, but that's why we have a sponge so we can kind of 
blend that out. If you're going to get one product from this video, let this be it. Let it be it. Then I just like to pinch the edge of my brush like this. And just feel a little under there and a little along the edges of my nose. <laughs> blush today. Honestly, I don't use a ton of blush. I'll use it today for the sake of the video, but I don't use a ton of it. I do have some to mention. These are the ones I reach for when I am using blush. That would be the Tarte blush in the shade Quirky. The Party shade is really good too. This stuff, I just love the color. I love the pigmentation. If we're talking drugstore, the Milani Powder Blush in Coral Cove. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. And the one we're going to be going in today is new for me as of this year, the Saharan Blush Palette in Volume 2. I just think you get a great variety with this. And I really like to use this darker shade Tau. You could lay these highlighting blushes on top. There's a lot of versatility in this palette. It's a one-stop shop for all your blush needs. This is it. It was pretty affordable. I got it at Ulta. I'm going to do my eyes like a very easy every day. We can go in on the eyes, but there's really only one palette that I want to mention in this video. This is not a good eyeshadow year for me. Um, obviously, the Shane and Jeff Jeffrey collab is great, but I've already reviewed it on this channel. It's down below if you want to see it. Uh, subscribe if you're new here. So truthfully, for everyday makeup, this is all that I do for my eyes. I just take my bronzing shade right there. That's the one we use today. And I'm just going to do that all over the lid. Super subtle, but I feel like it just ties everything in with the bronzer. It just makes you look like one whole working unit. This is going to be so weird, but I'm just here to tell the truth. The Pure Sorier Diaries. I've used this in probably three or four videos on my channel. This is the palette of 2019 for me. If you are a neutral bronze lover, this would be that for you. We've hit pan on a lot of the shades. It is looking like a hot mess. I'm going to be so sad when this runs out because I think it might be limited edition. I don't know. Check me, but I'm pretty sure that it is. And that th this is just, I love the way that the shadows blend. I think you can create so many neutral looks from this. It's just an everyday sort of situation here. I've tried, I play with a lot of different eyeshadow palettes, but truthfully, this is my favorite. So I'm just going to dip into the shade here, Gala, and I'm just going to use that shade to just blend the edges out of my bronzer, just add a little more depth to the look. I like to go all the way up to the end of my brow on this side, but keep it kind of low on the inside there. And then just to add some darkness to the inner corner, I'm going to use this burnt shade stunner right there. And just keep that on the outside here. I like to use the same brush for my eyeshadow when I'm just doing an everyday thing because I just feel like why dirty a million brushes. See, it's just so simple, but it looks good. So that's the finished look right there on the eyes. It's just workable. It's it's good for everyday life. I yeah, that's it. That's the look. I forgot to mention my favorite eyeshadow primer. I like the Urban Decay primer potion. It's expensive. The P. Louise base is another good one, but it's expensive. This is an Elizabeth Mott primer, and you can get it on Amazon. I think it's like 15 bucks. It lasts forever. You only need a little bit. You'll see in eyeshadow primers, my thing is I like them to have a tint. I have veiny eyelids, so if they have like a little bit of a tint to them, I usually enjoy that more. Um, so the other one, very cheap, very affordable, the Essence I Love Stage primer. I just slap these on, blend them with my finger. I don't even really set these. I just go right in. They work really well. They hold your shadow all day. These are my two favorites for 2019. If you noticed, I did do a little bit of eyeliner, just a small line, and then I did my waterline. And the products that I found work best for me in eyeliner all go into three different categories, one for each. Um, the Ico Fat Liquid Eyeliner in Black. Um, this is good for a wing. I am not good at wings, but this makes it a lot easier for me. And this is new for me as of like last month, but I want to talk about it. And this is new for me as of like last week. But again, I want to talk about 
It's the Marc Jacobs eyeliner. This is on my waterline right now. It stays in place. It is just creamy and great and I found a new, even though it's expensive and I know it will be to get the full size, I'm gonna buy it anyway because it's the best one I've found for a waterline. So this is it. And for a liquid eyeliner, the Hank and Henry Blickety Black liquid eyeliner, thin tipped right here. It's what I'm wearing on the top of my eyelids today. This is it. It's pigmented. It's easy to use. I am not good at eyeliner. This makes it so easy. One swipe and you're done. This is it. So this is the final look on the eyes. Let's talk mascara. I have three to talk about today. I'm a connoisseur of mascara, but these three are the three that have stuck with me since I've picked them up. One in particular, but we'll give honorable mention. First is the Tristique um, Good Vibes Mascara. It has a curler on one end of it. I don't use that, to be honest with you. And I don't even like it for what it does. I love the pigment on this. This is the blackest mascara I think I've ever used. I like to put this blink right into the wand and put it right at the roots of my lashes. For a more separating and volumizing mascara, I truly, truly think this does both. This is the Lancome Hypnos Drama Mascara. The wand is very funkily shaped. Lifts, separates, volumizes, it does it all in one mascara. But no matter what mascara I use, which I need a new one, um, is this is the one. This is the reigning champ of the year for sure without even thinking. It's the Pure Big Look Mascara. The wand is like no matter what mascara I use, I always go in with this afterwards because this wand is just made for separating. doesn't matter how gunky your first application look works, whatever. This, I just flick through after, especially on the ends, just to distribute whatever product I've already put on there. And it separates, and it's awesome, and I would 10 out of 10 recommend this. It is a little bit on the pricier side, I think around $20, but I'll buy this time and time again. This is my favorite mascara. If, if there's another one next year, I will be shocked. For highlight today, I don't have a ton of options. Um, not a ton of options. I have a ton of highlighters, but I don't have a ton that I loved. I really like the Ofra Rodeo Drive, but we all already know about that one. It is super blinding, so you got to be in the mood to like really glow like a disco ball. This is it for me, though. The Tarte Pro Glow Palette, um, the highlighters that are included in here, I just love I love that there's bronzy ones and regular ones, which we're going to be mixing these two today, which are the shades Lit and Strobe. And we're just going to be going in with a concentrated brush here, and I really only do it on my cheeks right here, and it just adds a little bit of sheen. I don't like to be loud with highlighters, I never have, but I do like to have just a little bit of glow right there. Can you see it? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, let's talk lips. We'll start with liners. My two favorite lip liners of the year are the Tarte, any of the Tarte lip liners. They just go on so creamy. I, oh no, I'm almost out of this. Meh. Um, but I love all the Tarte, Tartiest lip liners, lip crayons. These are great. And then this is a new one. It's so random. Um, the Carl Jagerfield Model & Co. These just go on they come in these little crayons like this and they just go on so smooth. They really show, they stay through the day. I really love this. The one we're gonna be going in with today though is the Lorac Pro Lip Crayon uh, in this shade. I just love to use this as like a base for literally any lip color and I just go all over the lips. I have really dry lips, so I am really picky about what lip products I use. If I dry my lips out any further, they might fall out, fall out, so. All these are pretty hydrating. They work really well. Two honorable mentions for the liquid lipstick category. This is random too, but it's the Laritzi Cosmetics Lip Liner in Nudes, and it's nude. I love this stuff. It stays. It's so easy to use. This is not super expensive, and it is, it's just great. This is the one we're going to be using today. And then oh, Tarte again. I, I'm a Tarte lover in 2019. 2019 has conformed me to a Tarte lover. This is the Tardiest Glossy Lip Paint in the shade Obvi. I have a few of these. I love these. They do dry a little bit, so I try to put a gloss over them to kind of seal the deal. 
but I love these products. They're definitely worth mentioning. But we're going to go in with the Laritzi product today. Okay, in 2019, I also became a fan of glitter toppers. Lip glosses that are also glitter toppers. I know, I never thought that I would see this day, but in 2019, that's what I used a lot of. So I'm going to talk about three today, and we'll be using one. My all-time favorite for the whole entire year is the Jouer Glitter Lip Toppers. This is the rose gold one. You have to see. Just look at that. It's blinding. And that's exactly how it looks on the lips. It's true to pigmentation. It's great. I don't think it would go great with this look. I would be using it. I use it literally every wedding I went to this year. And another one I really loved was the Becca Liquid um, Crystal Topper. These are great. The Tarte one's great too. These are pretty general across the board. But those are the two that I found that I really liked. The Tarte one, once again. And then the Becca one. And today, this is a new one for me as of last month. But I love it. It is the Too Faced. Gosh, this is in the shade... Two Night Stand. It's the High Shine Sparkling Lip Gloss. You've probably heard about it. And all I do with these is just right on my Cupid's bow. And I kind of transfer it. And then a little bit more on my bottom, just in the middle. Transfer. And there you have it. So this is the look today. These are products that if I were to lose everything in my collection, I would run out and buy these immediately. Um, this is it. I hope you like the look I created, even though it's pretty basic, but I really want to showcase each product one by one, and this was the best way for me to do that. Thanks for, stu tun Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.